Good morning, everybody. We're starting today's conversation in a little bit of a different format. Also to give some background as to our winter clothes that we are wearing for this conversation again. Uh, it's quite a misty morning, a little bit chilly, but beautiful. Always beautiful. Always beautiful when the mist is moving in up the valley. It's beautiful to see it as green as it is. Just find our spot. Whew. I almost put on my beanie again this morning. I think I must do it now after with this talk. <laughs> really chilly just keep this ready there go. good we've been talking about moses last week we looked at that passage with moses at the burning bush and in the course of this week the one thing led to the other and we said Listening to the marching orders that Moses received from God uh, there at the burning bush, God ordinary ordering Moses to go back to Egypt, isn't that in effect saying something different from what we've been talking on a previous occasion of God speaking through our loves. In other words, aren't we talking about two different messages here? On the one hand, we're saying, you know what, if you want to truly know what it is that you have to do, the way you have to live, just follow the trail of your loves. That will lead you... Yes, as a, actually, as a guiding principle. Yes. Yeah, living, living for and, us. Yeah. Follow your loves. What are your passions? Because if you follow that trail, it will lead you to a more intimate, deeper relationship with God. That's what we've said. And we still stand by that. We have to say that right at the beginning of this conversation. We still feel it is a guiding principle. God enters through our loves. But now God comes to Moses and he is giving him an order. Order is such a, um, a military term. Well, he calls him. He, he, he calls, calls him. calls him to action. What, what yeah. Him. yeah. And it seems as if it is ignoring Moses' preferences. Mm. Say, sorry, Moses. And his abilities. Yeah. He's a, his status. Um, He's most probably very scared of going back to Egypt. Mm. He committed a murder. Mm. So God is coming here and he is calling Moses to do something very difficult. And on face value, we want to say, but that is not following your loves. Yeah. And, and how, do we, how do we work or how do we understand... Um, uh, those times in our lives when we feel we are called to something and that or when we I know I remember as a teenager my biggest fear um, was that God will expect me to go to somewhere like China and to go and do mission work mm -hmm. and I was deadly scared of that I didn't feel that that was something that I wanted to do mm -hmm. uh, that's something that I so in me uh, I lived with the assumption that God would ask something difficult of me. Mm. Mm. I was almost expecting God to ask something that goes against what my wishes for my life would be. Mm. It's almost like if you truly want to see a, a deep calling, it will probably be a calling against your wishes and yeah. your innate 
Yeah, yeah. almost the thing of you will have to suffer for God. Yes, yes. Uh, it was it was growing up with that idea of yes um, uh, um, being martyred uh, mm. if if it needed if if that's what it needed. Mm. So uh, and really being fearful of that. Mm. And part of the whole God image of mm. that God would ex could expect something like that of me. Mm. And what plays into that uh, as well is it's not only Moses receiving such a call. No, there are many of them. I mean, mm. there's Jeremiah, there's uh, Jonah, Jonah, there's Jesus. Um, there, there's it's uh, there is such a lot of uh, evidence that that is. That we have to suffer. <laughs> yes. So how do we how do we understand this? How do um, we... It, it's, it's also interesting in terms of we have to suffer. Sometimes we have an underlying principle in our relationship with God. It is difficult or it is bad, so it must be from from God. Yes. Uh, it yes. is so difficult. It has to be from I can God. I trust this to be from God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is so difficult. Yes. Yes. Honestly. Yeah. Mm. But now looking at Moses, mm -hmm. um, going back. And um, the issue of loves yeah, and all of that. Yeah. So we were thinking of him and just trying to picture him and the story, his story. And um, what we were thinking is that maybe inside of him there was this burning um, uh, longing or desire that it would be better for his um um, his nation, his, his yeah, for the Israelites, his people, for his people. So although he and he and he left Egypt because he was coming up for his people in terms of he felt so strongly about them being mistreated that he murdered, he killed somebody. Mm. So he fled and 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 was living and created a, a, another life for himself. But inside of them, we would know that for sure. But one can take it. I mean, he still had family in Egypt. Mm. That he would have this. Uh, uh, and I was even thinking of that the, the burning bush might have been almost a symbol of the burning desire in his heart mm. for his people to be liberated. Mm. He, he didn't see himself as, as the, the, the solution to the problem, mm. but that he maybe had that burning desire in him. In him mm. for his people. Mm. So what you are saying, and we were talking about that, it is there are times when we are not aware of our deepest passion. Yeah, Consciously. That, that deep inner knowledge yeah. of our true essence, our true self. Yes. Is sometimes a thing that keeps us from doing the difficult thing because we don't know what what our potential deep down is yes yes and and not only potential because potential can also have the sound of uh well i know you won't like it but you're good at it uh, yeah no no not in that sense more in the sense of what is what has been put in you as a passion mm, as mm, as something mm. that you are willing to to go to great lengths for yes Yes. And how far are you able to do this? I mean, in that sense, potential in that sense. Yes. Um, and what we are saying then, in effect, is that following the trail of our passions is not necessarily an easy journey. No. no A stroll in the park. No, because, um, it, we, uh, because of our ego structure, because of the way that, that we have started to protect ourselves from difficulty, from from danger, from all of that. We 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 rather be in the comfort zone. Mm. Uh, even if that means that we are not going to those places, those deep places of of our passion and and, and where we would be um, fully able, alive. Yes, fully alive, uh, able to to, to create a better world. It's mm. just easier to just be where you are mm. and just stay in your comfort zone. Mm. Mm. So I think there's many reasons why we why we would, like Moses, say, no, I'm a stutterer. We might feel uh, unsure of ourselves. We might 
feel that time isn't right, we might feel we're not equipped. Mm. Um, um, and, and, and that would all be our personality playing in mm. um, to try and keep us safe. Mm. Um, mm. Mm. Because mm. it is a, it, it, if we look at Jesus, I mean, it is a perilous journey. It can be, it, 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 it can be very hard. Yes, yes. But also an integrated life. Yes, alive. 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 To be fully alive. Um, because uh, God wants us to be whole in all aspects of our lives. Whether it is being integrated in terms of body, mind, deep emotions, soul, being integrated in the, the world that we live in, and also neglected passions, mm. or passions that are avoided mm. because we are afraid of it. God takes us back to that. Um, uh, and it's beautiful. If you mm. think of Moses' life, he was so well positioned for the task mm. he grew up in the in the pharaoh's palace mm. he knew the language he knew the culture he knew the the the, the court um, uh, processes he, he was perfectly positioned to be the one to go back mm. Mm. to do this mm. um, he was prepared he was actually his life prepared him for this mm. he might not have felt that way mm or seen it that way, but mm. from where we're looking at it, we would say, of course. Mm. Mm. Moses, you the man. You must be the man. Who else? Yes, yes. And often we shy away from that journey. Um, we, we fool ourselves. We say that's not that important or no, I don't. It can't be me. It can't be me. Uh, Moses has a lot of objections. <coughs> Sorry. So we can have a lot of objections, but God, God doesn't relent in that sense. No. He says, if you want to be integrated, if you want to be a person fully alive, we have to go to that. We have to go to the places that you that you've thought you've left behind. There are unfinished business. There are things that you have to attend to there. And God takes us back. Mm. God isn't um, work. God isn't pampering us um, so that we can live a comfortable life. God is journeying with us so that we have a full life. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, and often we have a lot of ways where we can avoid going on that journey. Somebody said, going on that inner journey um, and to the passions and to what God is relating to us can be so difficult that we would rather go to church. Because going to church can be quite an avoidance tactic. Um, when I go to church, I can tick the box and I can say I'm religious, I'm in a relationship with God, I do it quite regularly, but that, that doesn't imply that I do the deep inner journey. Mm. Um, going to church can be part of that journey, but you have to, you have to get in contact with that deep inner voice. Mm. Would you say that we can take it, that, that if God comes to us with like to Moses, with a really difficult marching order, uh, and we really deep down know that this is God asking me to do this, that if we really look closely, and if we go quiet and we go deep, that we will see that it that we are have been prepared for it, that we have the the um, 
the makeup for it that it that that in our deepest self that it lives there uh, and that it is not foreign to our lives not really so it is not contradictory not contradictory at mm. all mm. we might not want to admit it even to ourselves or we might not want to stretch it quite that far mm. but but that if we really um uh, sit with it we will find that there's there's congruence that that it is the same thing mm. that god will not give us difficult things to take on if if we are not if deep down that isn't something that that lives in us as a passion or as a desire or as a, a, a um, just something that you really feel very strongly about i think i think god guiding us calling us <clears throat> uh, to do something like that is tied into our passion mm. Mm. deep down mm. if we say like we've said uh, on a previous occasion following uh, calvin augustine and a lot of the other mystics and theologians the road to ourselves is the road to god mm. and the road to god is the road to ourselves when we go deep when we when we get in touch with god we get in touch with our deepest essence it's not separated it's not two entities standing totally opposite each other it is it is so intertwined that it is difficult to distinguish between them when we really get in touch with god when we hear god speaking to us that voice is also the deep voice within mm -hmm. us it, it it it's two sides of the same coin mm. yeah and then also in terms of i'm taking myself again as a teenager and the fear of having to go to a far off land um it was a feeling of i'm going out on my own mm. i'm out there i'm a spiritual gospel I'm a sp and and but now with my journey um i know that the the although we've had difficult marching orders it's always been um with god with god mm. Uh, mm. having <clears throat> having that surety of not being alone of mm. not and not just um in terms of some um, um almost abstract uh, holding but also in terms of structure of in terms of um community in terms mm. of, of <clears throat> support mm. um, I mean like with Moses Aaron was already on his way mm. um, so so and looking back it's something that we can time and again say it was a difficult marching order but we were held um, by others by provision by um, by God being with us mm. Mm. and God saying I'm with you God is in effect saying, God, um, Moses, your journey is part of the big picture. Mm. Um, well, you're not the only solution. You're not. You're not the single yeah. pig in the hole. Uh, yeah, you. The, the, you're just one little uh, cog. Cog. Yeah, but an important one. Yes. Yes. You are extremely important. It's like a catalyst. Yes. Yes. You're part of that, but. Moses, even before I've spoken to you, I've spoken to your brother and he is on his way. So it is this network coming into play, this integrated life. Mm. And we have to be very careful when we think we're the only solution. Mm. So part of this journey, this inner journey, because it can be that it is a long process to get to that. We see Moses standing next to the bush and the, he, he got his uh, 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 calling and the next moment he says, yes, I'm going. But it can be a long process. 
and we have we we might need to speak to somebody uh, go to a spiritual director and saying am i hearing this correctly mm. uh, what am i hearing somebody to help you discern remember we spoke about discernment as well that can be part of this process um, but also knowing that god is constantly guiding us to deeper self-knowledge um, god god wants us awake we shouldn't be sleepwalkers saying well i've settled sometimes god takes us back to what we think we've left behind mm. because that is necessary for the integrated life in terms of ourselves and also in the wider context um, so there's a, quite a few practical issues and to be on the lookout and to tap into our resources uh, which can take on many many forms part of that journey uh, towards self-discovery might imply that I discover that I need help Often we say we'll manage totally on our own. Very seldom we can. Um, we need other people. We need the resources. And God is learn, uh, guiding us in, in that discovery as well. Yes. Thank you that you can be a sounding board for our own thoughts and journey with a text and experiences um, if you feel as if you are uh, misused let us know <laughs> uh, that is not the idea it's lovely to have the conversations with you as well have a lovely week everybody Goodbye. keep well bye bye <laughs>